like, share, subscribe. Hey y'all, welcome back. Today we are reviewing Unit 9, which is all about polynomial functions. So let's look at number one. It looks like we've got a graph for f of x here. No equation, but what we're going to do is we're going to analyze what's going on with this function, starting with part A, where it asks us to describe the end behavior. So since it's going down to the left and down to the right, we're going to say as x approaches negative infinity, the value of f of x will approach negative infinity. And basically what that's saying is as x goes to the left, y goes down. And the same behavior uh, occurs over here to the right. We can see it's going down as x goes to the right. So as x approaches positive infinity, f of x, or the values of y, will approach negative infinity. And uh, so that's it. That's this, When it's asking to describe the end behavior, that is really all it's asking for. Part B says, what does the end behavior tell you about the leading term of f of x when written in standard form? Well, the fact that it's going down to the left and down to the right tells us that we have an even degree. So the degree might be something like 2, 4, 6, 8. It's definitely got to be bigger than 2, though, because of how many zeros we have here. Uh, but we know we've got an even degree. And we know that the leading coefficient is negative. So negative leading coefficient. Okay, so the, uh, yeah, so those are the two things we can tell just by looking at the end behavior. It says, what are all the roots of f of x include multiplicities? So we can see on the graph, when we're talking about roots, what we're looking at are these x-intercepts. And depending on what the graph is doing or how it's behaving at these x-intercepts will tell us what the multiplicities are. So when, it, when the graph just goes straight through, like here at x equals 0, uh, there's no multiplicity. So at x equals 0, we have a multiplicity of um, 1, I guess. Uh, but we, we don't usually say multiplicities uh, if there's just a single root. Um, I might, just for the sake of explaining this, make a note and say that the, this is just a single root. OK. Now at x equals negative 3, we, it does cross over, it does um, go through the x-axis uh, from negative to positive, but because we have this slight bend here, we have an, uh, an odd multiplicity. So we'll assume that it's the smallest possible odd multiplicity here, and so we'll say that the multiplicity is 3. And then at x equals positive 2, we've got a bounce, so in that case we have an even multiplicity, and uh, it isn't enough on the graph to say exactly what the multiplicity is. So we'll just go with the smallest, um, smallest possible number here and say that it's multiplicity 2. <coughs> Part D is asking us to write the equation of the function. Um, so based on these multiplicities, and it says leave it in factored form so we don't have to actually multiply it all together, this shouldn't be too bad. Uh, we've got x equals 0 as a single root, so one of our factors is just going to be x. If we have a factor of negative 3, we know we've got, I'm sorry, if we've got a root of negative 3, we know we have a factor of x plus 3. And since the multiplicity is 3, we're going to cube it. Finally, we have a, multi, uh, a, a root of zero, uh, 2, so we have a factor of x minus 2, and its multiplicity is 2, so we're going to square it. Um, our y-intercept is 0 here, so we don't have to worry about modifying that. The only thing that we do need to take care of is the fact that this thing is opening down, down, right? Down to the left, down to the right. Our, le our leading coefficient does need to be negative, okay? So I'm going to throw in a negative sign right out at the front. Okay, it doesn't affect what the roots are, but it does affect uh, the end behavior. Uh, our degree is even, that checks out because we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so it is an even degreed polynomial. We don't need to multiply this together because it says specifically to leave it in factored form, so uh, that's it. We're going to be done with that. And uh, that's the end of number one. 
Number two, it asks us to sketch the graph of this uh, function, um, label all non-zero intercepts. So before um, I really wanna sketch it, I'm gonna answer as many of these questions as I can, and then I'll use my answers here to uh, put the graph together. So the first one is asking us to describe the end behavior using infinity notation. Uh, kind of like 1a here. I mean, basically we're gonna have an answer similar to this, but it won't be as obvious because we don't have a picture. What we do have though is this leading term 3x cubed. And since the degree is um, uh, odd and the leading coefficient is positive, we can conclude that the end behavior is gonna go down to the left and up to the right. So the way we say that using infinity notation is that as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. In other words, uh, it's going down to the left. And also as x approaches positive infinity, the value of the function is going up. So we need to change this to positive infinity. So we only need to look at this first term to be able to tell that. It says write the function in factored form. So here we're gonna do a little bit of algebra here. Uh, I'm gonna start with the original function, 3x cubed minus 12x squared plus 3x. There is a greatest common factor here. We can factor out a GCF of uh, 3x. So I'll start with that. So 3x times uh, x squared minus 4x uh, plus 1. Oh, I don't think this is not going to be factorable. Um, so, and uh, just let me think about this for a second here. I think the discriminant is going to be negative, right? B squared, that'll be 16 minus 4, 8. No, uh, actually, this we're going to have to use quadratic formula here to find the other two zeros. Um, so x here will equal 0, and we'll get that. Uh, um, well, we'll just leave it like that for now because I don't believe we can, uh, we can actually factor that further. So find all the roots and their multiplicities. So we're going to set each factor equal to zero and solve them individually. Uh, over here we've got x squared minus 4x plus 1. So for the first root, we're going to get x equals zero. That has a mul that has uh, you know really no multiplicity, or I guess multiplicity one. You don't really say the multiplicity if it's just one because it's not there's not more than one. Um, for this one, since this is not factorable, we are going to have to unfortunately use quadratic formula here. Uh, I'll write the quadratic formula out to the side uh, just in case you have forgotten it. X equals negative b uh, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. And so I'm gonna plug in all the values um, that I have for the coefficients of this quadratic into that uh, equation here. So we've got negative, negative four is gonna be positive four. Uh, this is gonna be negative four squared. Uh, so that's just gonna be 16. Four times one times one is just gonna be four. Uh, and then let's see, two times one is just two. So 16 minus four is gonna be 12. It's about as far as we can go here. Um, can, I guess we can simplify this a little bit more. Um, not a whole lot, but one thing we could do, I, I guess we could just leave it like that. So we have, we have both of these solutions here. So one of these, uh, actually it looks like both of these are gonna be positive, okay? So, uh, we're, let me label both of these values on the x-axis here. We've got one over here and one over here, where the first one is gonna be four plus root 12. Uh, I, I guess uh, first one will be four minus root 12. Um, and then the second one will be four plus root 12. And then we've got, of course, zero. So these are gonna be the three places where we are going to intersect the x-axis. So we're gonna have an x-intercept here, here, and here. Um, and the y-intercept here is gonna be zero. 
okay? The f to find the y-intercept, you're gonna plug in zero into x, but then I'm just gonna have zero minus zero plus zero. It's just gonna be zero. So the coordinate here would just be zero, zero. So to put the graph together, um, you know, we want to we have the end behavior saying that as x goes to negative infinity, uh, f of x goes to negative infinity. So I'm going to start by drawing like an arrow going downwards here. Um, all of these roots are just singular roots, so we're just going to pass through each one of these, which is going to make uh, and, and and which is going to sort of force me to go up, but I should go up anyway uh, according to my end behavior here. So here's the graph of that function. Number three, um, looks like we're doing a couple different sketches of these polynomial functions. And uh, from the looks of it, they're all factored already, which is kind of nice. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, kind of analyze the equation a little bit. I'm going to make note of what my leading term is, my x-intercepts, my end behavior, and my y-intercept. Uh, so let's break all that down first. Um, I'm going to find the leading term. That way I know what the end behavior is supposed to be. So I'm going to multiply negative x uh, times x squared times x squared, uh, which equals negative x to the fifth. Okay, so that's going to have an odd degree and a negative leading coefficient. So the end behavior is going to be uh, down up. So it's not asking me to, you know, be to, to write the end behavior. So I'm not going to worry about using the infinity notation. I'm just going to say that the end behavior should be going up to the left and it should be going down to the right. Okay. Uh, the next thing is to find the y intercept. And I do something kind of similar to how I found the leading term. And that is I'm just going to multiply all the last terms rather than all the first terms. So for the y intercept, um, well, actually, we don't need to do anything because if we just plug in zero for x uh, then this is going to be zero and zero times anything is just zero so the y-intercept here should be zero zero and then for the x-intercepts we're going to set each uh, each factor equal to zero and solve them individually so x intercepts we're going to set x equal to zero or I guess we can even do negative x just so we're not sort of leaving anything out here negative x equals zero or x plus two squared equals zero and then x minus two squared equals zero so the x-intercepts we get are going to be x equals zero and all these, um, that one's going to be multiplicity 1. Here we'll get x equals negative 2 with a multiplicity of 2. And then the last one will be uh, x equals positive 2, also with a multiplicity of 2. So that multiplicity is going to tell us that when we hit the x-axis at this particular x value, we're going to bounce off the x-axis rather than going straight through it. So first, I'm going to label uh, each of my intercepts, so 2 negative two, that's really it. Um, don't need to label zero here. And I'm gonna plot all three of my x-intercepts and it just so happens that one of those is also the y-intercept. So here's negative two, here's zero, here's two. The end behavior is uh, up to the left, so I'm gonna do something like this. But I am gonna bounce off this axis because of this multiplicity, so I'm gonna do a bounce now zero is just uh, a single root, so I'm gonna go straight through, and then I'm gonna come back and bounce off of this one. So my graph is gonna look something like this. So I got a bounce, pass through, and a bounce. That's it for this one. For uh, letter B, a uh, similar kind of problem here. So I'm gonna just kind of copy my work here so I can just kind of fill in the blanks and not have to retype every little d detail here. Uh, so to get the leading term, we're going to have 3 times x times x times x squared. So that's going to be uh, 3x to the fourth. That has a even degree and a positive leading coefficient. 
So the uh, end behavior is going to be up, up. The y-intercept, if I plug in 0 here, um, I'm going to get, this one I'll actually have to compute, 3 times 3 times negative 2 times uh, negative 5 squared. So that's, uh, we're multiplying that negative 5 twice. Uh, so that would be 25 times 2 uh, would be 50. and that's, So that's negative 50 times 9. Let me, let me think of through this through. 9 times negative 50 would be negative 450. All right, let's see. 9 times 2 would be 18. 18. It's probably easier to go the other way like I did it. 25 times 2 is 50. And then 9 times 50. Yeah, okay, I think that's right. So negative 450. So now, uh, and for our x-intercepts, we're going to set x plus 3 to be equal to 0. So x is going to be negative 3. That's got uh, no mul multiplicity there. Uh, for the next one, we have x minus 2 equals 0. So we get an x-coordinate at positive 2. Again, just a single root. This one is going to be a double here. Uh, we're going to get x equals 5, uh, and that is going to have a multiplicity of 2, so we're expecting a bounce occurring at that location. So uh, my labeling is going to go a little something like this. I'm going to put in negative 3, and I need a 2, and I need a 5. So I'm going to plot all of my x-intercepts, and then I'm also going to plot my y-intercept, and obviously this is not going to be to scale uh, because it's negative 450. Um, but I do, I do need to label it so that it's clear what that's supposed to be. All right, so since my end behavior is up, up, and the only uh, bounce I'm going to have is at 5, um, I guess we're ready to go here. So here's up. I'm going to come down. I'm going to pass straight through this and make sure to hit this 450. I'm going to go straight through this one, come down and do a bounce off of 5, and then go back up. So your graph should look something like this. Okay, let's take a look at number 4. So for number 4, um, it says determine a function for like an equation. Um, I guess that's really what it's asking for is uh, the equation for this function. This should say determine an equation. It is a function, but I think just grammatically it would make more sense if this said uh, an equation. It's really the intention here for j of x. And we're going to write it in standard form, which means we're not going to be able to leave it in factored form like we did this one, but hopefully it won't be as bad as that one. Um, so let's start by getting the, the factors down here. So I'm going to say j of x uh, let's make that red. So j of x equals, uh, make this a little bigger so you can see it, uh, x plus 4, right, because we've got a single root here, so it's going straight through. We've got a single root at negative 1, so we've got x plus 1, and then we've got a single root at 3, so x minus 3. Now, there will probably be, uh, we got to make sure that our y-intercept is correct. So after we multiply this out, uh, we'll figure out like what the uh, um, what the y-intercept is supposed to be, and what kind of factor do we need to multiply this by in order to make that happen. So here, uh, I'm going to start by multiplying uh, the uh, these. Uh, uh, let's see, make this a little bigger. I'll multiply the first two binomials first, and then I'll multiply the last binomial in there. So we got x squared um, plus 4x plus x plus 4. And then this 4x plus x is going to be 5x. So then I'm going to multiply that by x minus 3. And I'll just start with the x's. Uh, so that would be x cubed plus 5x squared plus 4x. And now I'll distribute the negative 3 in. So minus 3x squared uh, minus, oh, let's fix that. What's going on here? 
There we go. Uh, so minus 3x squared minus 15x minus 12. And we don't need these parentheses anymore. Finally, I can combine my like terms here. I've got x cubed. I've got 5x squared minus 3x squared. So that's going to be minus or plus 2x squared. And then I've got 4x minus 15x is going to be minus, would that be 9x? Is that right? Uh, 15 minus 4 would be 11, no, minus 11x. And then minus 12. Okay, so now we've got it in standard form, but notice how this y-intercept is incorrect, unfortunately. It's supposed to be negative 3, but if all we do is look at the roots, we see that we've got a negative 12 here. So what we need to do is multiply this entire thing by some number that, uh, that will actually force this to be negative 3. So the number I need to multiply um, negative 12 by to make it negative 3 would be 1 fourth, and that, that would kind of fix that problem. So that means that all of these should have been uh, times 1 fourth. So I'm going to go ahead and put the 1 fourth in front of all of them. But again, you, you're not going to know that up front until you actually figure out what, uh, what the y-intercept is of the polynomial you write. So don't expect to just know that coefficient off the bat. It's something you've got to figure out after you multiply everything together. So now I can do my last step, which is going to be to actually multiply that coefficient into the polynomial. And I get 1 fourth x cubed uh, plus 1 half x squared uh, minus 11 fourths x and then minus 3, which is going to give us the correct uh, denominator here, or the correct y-intercept rather. So there we go. There is our, uh, our function. Now, as far as describing the end behavior using infinity notation, uh, we can see clearly from the graph that it's going down to the left and up to the right. Um, so what I'm going to actually do is just steal what I had from up here. So I don't have to retype all that. Um, well, I thought I was there. There we go. So as x goes to infinity, we can see that the graph is going down. And as x goes to positive infinity, the graph is going to go up. So we're going to go towards positive infinity. And that, I think, will conclude number four. All right. Let's take a look at number five. All right, number five, um, we're trying to, all we're doing here is just trying to write the equation. Um, and so we're going to do something very similar to what we did up here. We'll start with the zeros. Um, and this particular one, it says leave in factored form, so we don't need to worry about multiplying it out like we did that. So it should be a little bit easier, just a hair. Uh, we do have a y-intercept of 5, so we'll consider that as we go. Uh, but let's see what happens here. So uh, we'll have y equals, or I guess we'll call it f of x, since that's mostly what we've been using. Uh, f of x equals, now the first zero is occurring at negative 6, and that just passes right through. So I'm just going to write x plus 6, no multiplicity on that one. So I'm not going to square this or anything. The next one that occurs is at negative 2. It's the same kind of thing here. I'm going to write x plus 2. Um, then the next one is going to be at x equals 1. So I'm going to say x minus 1 is a factor. But this one bounces off the x-axis. So I'm going to square it to make sure that that has a multiplicity of 2. And then the last uh, root is at 5. So my factor is going to be x minus 5. Now, as it stands, the y-intercept of this, and this is just going to be like a little scratch work to help me figure it out, is going to be, um, in this case, 6 uh, times 6. Sorry, 6 times 2 uh, times negative 1 squared times negative 5. So let's see here, it would be the easiest order to multiply these in. 6 times 5 is 30, so that would actually be like negative 30. Negative 1 squared is just 1, so that's kind of nice, so I don't even need to consider that. So I've got negative 30 times 2 is negative 60. Uh, did I get that right? Let's see, so 10, yeah, negative 60. So 
this y-intercept is obviously not negative 60, it's 5. So we got to say, okay, well, negative 60, uh, you know, times what is 5, right? And so just kind of rearranging this a little bit by dividing both sides by 60, we're going to get 5 over negative 60, which is, if I divide both of those by 5, I'll get negative 1 over... Uh, let's see, that would be 12. Am I right there? I think so, yeah. Okay, so the actual, so this is gonna be um, the number that, or the, uh, uh, the leading coefficient that we're gonna multiply this whole thing by. So my final answer here is gonna be all this, but times this negative 112. And that also serves to fix the end behavior because without this, we would have had a positive coefficient, which means my end behavior would have been down up. But the fact that this ends up being negative um, really cleans that up as well. So then we don't have to worry about that. So this is gonna be our final answer. I might, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna write and say current y-intercept because that's not gonna be our final y-intercept. Um, so this is right here the uh, desired y-intercept. Okay, there we go, there's number five. Let's take a look at number six. So it looks like number six, um, we're just solving some polynomial inequalities. Uh, you can sketch a graph or construct a number line. Either way works. Um, when we when we get into the, solving the rational inequalities, we're probably going to be better off doing the number line anyway. So I just want to get in the habit of that. And so I'll use the number line um, to, to actually uh, uh, figure out what the... Te uh, uh, use the number line to help us solve this. So first I'm going to factor, and this would be x minus 3 times x plus 2. Okay, so my x-intercepts are going to occur at 3 and negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to draw a little number line here. And I'm going to label 3 and negative 2 on here, which will construct a total of 3 intervals. And I'm going to choose some representatives from each interval to test and see if they're going to be positive or negative. So from this interval, um, I'm going to pick negative 10. From this interval, I'll pick 0. And from this interval, I'll pick 10. So if I plug in negative 10, I get a negative times a negative, which is positive. Um, if I plug in 0, I get a negative times a positive, which is negative. If I plug in 10, I get a positive times a positive, which is negative. So since I'm looking for where this polynomial is less than 0 or negative, um, it's just going to be in between negative 2 and 3. So the notation here for my solution set is going to be x. And then I'm going to use that stylized um, uh, epsilon symbol. It looks like this. Um, so x is an element of the set. Uh, and then we're just going to include from negative 2 to 3. For b, we do have to make sure that we have 0 on one side, so we'll start by adding 48 to both sides. And uh, we don't have a GCF here, unfortunately, so we are going to have to try to factor this by grouping. Um, so we'll group the first two terms and the last two terms kind of go from there. So the first two terms, we have a GCF of x squared, so I'm going to factor out an x squared out of these two terms, which will leave me with 2x minus 3. And for these two terms, I'm going to factor out a negative 16, which if I divide 32 by that, I get 2. If I divide 48 by that, I'm going to get uh, minus 3. So this is kind of where uh, we can kind of check and make sure we're doing it right. If what's inside the parentheses here is the same, then we know we're on the right track. 
So my two factors here are going to be 2x minus 3 and x squared minus 16. So the 2x minus uh, 16, I'm sorry, the 2x minus 3 is going to result in an x intercept at 3 halves. So I can write x equals 3 halves. And then if I have x squared minus 16 equals 0, then I'm going to get plus or minus 4. So 4 and negative 4. So now I can go ahead and draw my. Uh, I can draw my number line uh, with negative 4 um, with 3 halves, which is 1.5, and uh, 4 on it. And I'm going to choose my representatives to be <coughs> numbers that are inside each of those four intervals. So I'm going to go with negative 10, I'm going to go with 0, um, I guess I'll use 2, and 10. And we will plug those in uh, back to our factored uh, equation and see uh, whether or not it's positive or negative. So if I plug in negative 10, I get a negative uh, times a positive is going to be negative. If I plug in 0, I'm going to get a negative times a negative, which is positive. If I plug in 2, I'm going to get a positive times a negative, which is negative. And if I plug in 10, I'll get a positive times a positive, which is positive. So if we're looking for the x values uh, where this is greater than or equal to 0, we're going to be identifying these positive intervals and including the endpoints because uh, of that or equal to part of the inequality. So I'm going to say x is an element of the set. Oops. The first one where it's greater than or equal to negative 48 is going to be from negative 4 to 1.5. And I'm going to go back and just write it as a uh, fraction, so 3 halves. Oops. And then I'm going to use this union symbol to join the two sets that, uh, that I've got here. And then the last one's going to be from 4 to infinity. Now, you can never actually reach infinity, so that's always going to have a parenthesis on it. Um, but all the one other ones should be brackets because we want, do want to include those endpoints in the set. So there's 6b. Uh, let's take a look at c. For letter C here, we do need to get a zero over here on this side, so we're going to add eight to both sides. And this is going to end up not being factorable, so we will need to use the quadratic formula, um, which we went over here on, what problem number was that? I think it was problem two. So go, go back to uh, problem two if you want to me to really break down that quadratic formula. So uh, let's see here. So we got a, oops. So we're going to replace all of these uh, ABCs with the coefficients, which are 1, 3, and 8. Uh, so this is going to be 3. Uh, 3 squared is 9. Uh, 4 times 1 is just 4, and then times 8. So 4 times 8 is 32. All right, so we don't really need to go much further than this because 9, times, or nine minus 32 is going to be negative 23. Now, this is uh, an, a complex number. It's going to result in an imaginary. So there's going to be no x-intercepts. So what that means is um, no x-intercepts. And that is, again, I know that because we got this square root underneath this. Uh, I'm sorry, we got this negative underneath the square root. Um, so on our number line, there's not going to be any x values to place. So we can actually just pick any number we want. and we're either going to get a solution that is all real numbers, or we'll get a solution where there is no real numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the simplest representative I can think of, which is just 0. Um, and so if I plug in 0, I'm going to get 0 plus 0 plus 8. Um, that's going to be positive. So we know we're positive everywhere here. Uh, and so our, my solution set is just going to be all real numbers. Okay, it's going to be from negative infinity to infinity. So it's kind of a special case here where basically, like if you want to try to visualize like why that is, this parabola, and I'm not sure exactly what it looks like, 
but it's completely above the x-axis so it's never crossing here and you can see so it's always going to be positive right that's kind of what's happening with that one so my solution set's going to be negative infinity to infinity uh, lastly we've got d here um, we've got two this one's already factored which is kind of nice so I can just jump straight to the x-intercepts We've got x equals 1, and that has a multiplicity of 2. So we're not going to expect a sign change at that particular x-intercept. And then the other one we have is going to be negative 2, and that's got a multiplicity of 3. So there should be a sign change there, um, but, uh, but there won't be one at x equals 1, or at least we should not expect one, one to be there. So here is negative 2. Here's one. I'm going to pick my representatives to be uh, negative 10 for that leftmost interval. Uh, I'll pick 0 and I'll pick 10. So if I plug in, uh, now I don't have to plug it into everyone because look at this. This thing's squared, so this thing's always going to be positive. So really all I care about is whether is whether or not this is positive or negative. And if I plug in negative 10, that's going to be negative. If I plug in zero, that's going to be positive. And I'm not expecting a sign change here because of the even multiplicity. But if I plug in 10, I do, in fact, get another positive. Now, this says greater than or equal to zero. So I want to make sure that I include like at, at 1 at 0 and at negative 2 at 0. I want to make sure both of those are in my sets, uh, in my set. So when I write my solution set, I'm going to say x could be any number in between negative 2 and infinity and that will actually capture everything basically everything from here to the right uh, will work all right so there's d um, moving on to the last page here what we're doing is solving some uh, rational inequalities all right for number seven um, we do have a rational inequality here, so not only do we have to find the zeros like we did up here, but we also have to find the values that make x zero as well. So we'll do that separately. Um, so first, we're, we will find the x-intercepts by, by setting the numerator equal to zero, and then we'll find the uh, places that make the rational expression undefined by uh, setting the denominator equal to zero. So here we've got uh, x squared minus 1 equals 0. And over here we just have x equals 0, which we don't even have to solve anything. Um, so there's just x equals 0. So here we'll add 1 and then take the square root. So we will get plus or minus 1. Um, so now I can make my, my number line here. And I'm going to place 0, 1, and negative 1 on here. I need to pick representatives. Um, and so let's see here. I'll pick negative 10, negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 10. And so I'll plug this in and see what happens. So if I plug in negative 10, I'm going to get a positive divided by a uh, negative. So that's going to be negative. If I plug in negative 1 half, Let's see, that would be a negative divided by a negative is going to be positive. If I plug in a half, that's going to be a negative divided by a positive, which is negative. And if I plug in 10, I'm going to get a positive over a positive, which is positive. Now, what I'm looking for are the negatives. I'm sorry, the positives, because I want to know when is this greater than zero. So my solution set here is going to be x uh, is an element of the set. Uh, negative 1 to 0, and I'm not going to include those endpoints because there's no equals 2 here. And then uh, union, let me steal that symbol from over here. And then the last one is going to be from 1 to infinity. And that is 7a. If we look at 7b, um, this one, we don't have a 0 over to the right-hand side, so we need to take care of that up front. Uh, so I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. And I will need to find a common denominator here. So I'm going to rewrite this as 
um, well here I'll just copy the whole thing so I have to retype it. Uh, this is going to be multiplied by x minus 5 over x minus 5. So that would be 3x minus 15 over x minus 5. So my common denominator is the same, so I can now combine uh, my like terms up top. 2x minus 3x is going to be negative x. And then negative 7 plus 15 is going to be 8, so plus 8. So negative x plus 8 divided by x minus 5 is um, going to be sort of my simplified problem here. Um, so now I can find my x-intercepts and where the function is going to be undefined. My x-intercepts are going to occur where the numerator is 0, so I have negative x plus 8 equals 0. Uh, so I just get x equals 8, and then it will be undefined anywhere the denominator is 0. So if x minus 5 is 0, x is 5. Now for rational inequalities, I want to make sure that I differentiate the places that give me an x-intercepts, uh, the places that make the function equal 0 with <coughs> the places that make the function undefined. So I'm going to label that on here. So like at 8, um, I've got a 0, whereas at 5, or here, I'll, I'll type this out. Um, so it's just a little easier to, to look at. At 5, it's going to be undefined. OK, and the reason why I'm pointing that out is because this does says less than or equal to. So it's going to be important. Up here, it didn't really matter because there's no equal to. But uh, it'll be important that we actually include 8 in our solution set uh, with wherever else it's going to be negative. So let's pick some representatives here. Uh, I'll pick 0 and 6 and 10. How about that? So if I plug in 0, I'm going to get a positive over a negative, which is negative. If I plug in 6, I get a uh, positive over positive, which is positive. And if I plug in 10, I'm going to get a negative over a positive, which is negative. So if I'm looking for where it's less than or equal to 0, I'm going to include this set here and this set here and make sure I include x equals 8 as well. Uh, and I can do that with a, with a little bracket. Here we go. I'm about to write my solution set. First one's going to be negative infinity to 5, and that's going to be exclusive. I don't want to actually include 5, but I do want to include 8. So I'm going to make sure I say from 8 uh, to infinity. And infinity will always have a parenthesis. Uh, all right. Um, so that's it. I think we've got one last problem here. Um, which is going to kind of put everything together. So we are going to solve, what number is this? Uh, 7C. For this last problem, we do need to have it uh, be 0 on the right-hand side. So we're going to subtract um, everything to the left-hand side. So we have 3x over x minus 1, minus x over x plus 4, minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. So now I'm going to find a common denominator which is not going to be too pretty. We're going to have to multiply that first fraction by x plus 4 over x plus 4. And we're going to have to multiply this second fraction by x minus 1 over x minus 1. And we're going to have to multiply this one by both. So we'll have x minus 1 times x minus 4. All right, so that way we have, um, we've got the same denominator on all of these. Um, so before I go through the process of actually combining all these, uh, I think what I want to do first is actually distribute and kind of multiply everything that I can together. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I'll do that as a separate step. So 3x times x plus 4 is going to be 3x squared plus 12x. And over here we'll have x squared minus x. And over here we'll have, um, well here, let's multiply these two first. That would be x squared uh, minus x minus 4x plus 4. 
negative x minus 4x is going to be negative 5x. And then if I multiply all of those by 3, I'm going to get 3x squared uh, minus 15x plus 12. Okay. So now I can start combining everything, uh, all my like terms. Okay, so we, let's start with our squared. So we got 3x squared minus 1x squared, so we're up to 2x squared. Uh, minus another 3x squared. So really these 3x squared are going to cancel out and uh, we'll just be left with a minus x squared. So negative x squared and then I'll just kind of delete everything else that we don't need here. Okay, and then with our x's we've got 12x minus a negative 1x, so that'd be 13x plus 15x so 13 plus 15 would be 28. And then the last one, let's see, for our constants, it looks like we just have a minus 12 on here. Yep, that's it. Uh, is that it? I think so. So let's fix up uh, this last one. Um, so that'll be three x. So we're still going to have the negative x squared here, but this is going to be twelve uh, plus one is thirteen minus three is going to be plus four x, not twenty eight x. And then this is going to be minus a negative twelve, so that should be plus twelve. Phew. All right. Well, thanks for bearing with me there, uh, but I think we're in a good spot now. Uh, so now we can find our x-intercepts and find where the function's undefined and kind of go through the next steps of this process. Um, let me just kind of organize this up a little bit. So to find my x-intercepts, I'm gonna set first negative x squared plus four x plus 12 equal to zero. And then I'm gonna also set uh, for my, to find, figure out where it's undefined, uh, x minus one times x plus four equals zero. Make sure you can see that. There we go. Okay, so uh, to find the, let's, let's start with the easy one first, um, the undefined. Uh, so here we're gonna get x equals one, x equals negative four. But for the x-intercepts, this is gonna be another case where we're gonna use quadratic formula here, I think, because uh, well, here, oh, maybe not. Let's see. Uh, let's see. If I factor out a negative one, then I'm going to get x squared minus four x minus twelve equals zero. And then is that going to work? Oh, actually, yeah, we can factor this out. I take it back. We're not going to have to use quadratic formula here. So yeah, we're going to get negative, and then we'll get x minus six, and then times x plus two. Right, so we get end up with x equals six and x equals negative two as our two x-intercepts. So let's wrap this up. We got our number line. We're going to have a total of five intervals here, uh, with our partitions being uh, negative four, negative two, one, and six. So I'm going to pick my representatives as uh, I'll go with negative 10, negative 3, 0, 5, and 10. Um, okay, so if I plug in negative 10, what am I going to get here? I'm going to get a, uh, should be negative. If I plug in negative 3, I'll get positive. If I plug in zero, I'll get negative. 
if I plug in 5, I'm going to get positive. And if I plug in 10, should get negative. Yep. OK, cool. So now, after all that work, we can finally write our solution. This one's been pretty brutal. I'm going to be honest here. Uh, this is uh, definitely on the harder end of the spectrum uh, here as far as like how difficult these problems can get. Probably is not going to one that's the, nearly this crazy on the test. Uh, but if you can master this problem, then you know you've got a really good handle on how to solve these kind of uh, inequalities. So here we go. If we want uh, to find where it's less than or equal to zero, um, now before I go through this, uh, I do want to make a note of where my function is zero or where is it undefined. It's going to be zero at six and negative two. Since this says uh, less than or equal to, I do want to include those two values in my solution set. Uh, so just um, be ready for that. And then um, at one and at negative four, the function is undefined. So I do definitely do not want to include um, that in my solution set. Um, I might just abbreviate this. Uh, okay. So, uh, so yeah, so let's go ahead and write our solution set here. We're going to say negative infinity to negative four, and we do not want to include negative four there. And then the next interval will be from uh, negative two to one. We do want to include negative two because that's a zero. Don't want to include one. And then we have one last set here. It's going to be from six, which is a zero, so we're going to include it. To infinity. Phew! All right, that was uh, that's pretty much I think the hardest one we've had to solve so far. Even even on the nine three homework, um, I think this one was not it was was just far and away kind of the toughest one we've had to deal with so far. But uh, but we got through it. Um, thanks for bearing with me on that little correction that we had to make on this one. Um, but that's it for the review. Uh, make sure uh, if you need a little extra practice, you do the additional practice problems. Uh, but other than that, y'all have a great day and I'll see you next time.